In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at factoring strategies and really where you should start and uh, some strategies you use to, uh, to factor a lot of algebraic expressions. There are factoring strategies beyond the scope of what this tutorial will, um, will cover. Uh, this is actually uh, created for a uh, grade 10 uh, math course, an academic math course in the province of Ontario, Canada. So it's based on that curriculum. Now, whenever you're factoring, the first thing you should do is always check for common factors, uh, what divides evenly into all of the terms. And so in this first example, we're factoring 3x to the fifth minus 12x cubed plus 15x squared. Well, 3 divides into each of those numbers evenly, so the common factor should have a 3 in it. And there's also powers of x in each of these. You can always factor out the lowest common power. So x squared is the lowest common power. Uh, these are higher, so we can certainly divide those by x squared, because that's what you're doing when you're factoring. You're dividing out that common factor. Uh, I could Now, I could divide 15x squared by, let's say, 3x cubed, but that would give me a negative exponent here, and you do not want that when you're common factoring. So the common factor is 3x squared. So we write down 3x equals 3x squared, and we'll put a bracket here. And then what goes in the set of brackets is what we get when we divide each of these by 3x squared. So let's do that. So we're dividing by 3x squared. Well, 3 divides into itself once, so the, uh, the coefficient will be 1. And then it gives us x, and it's x cubed because 5 minus 2 is 3. When you're dividing powers with the same base, you subtract the exponents to write it as one single power. Uh, next one, we'll divide the negative 12x cubed by 3x squared. And that gives minus 4x because negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. x cubed divided by x squared would be x to the first. And the last one, we'll divide the 15x squared by 3x squared. 15 divided by 3 is 5. There's no x's because x squared divided by x squared is x to the power of 0, or 1, which means there's no x's, so it's just 5 in the end. And then we close the bracket. In the uh, second step here, we're going to cover factoring by grouping. And so that will generally be if you have an even number of terms, not so much two. Two, you're really just looking at common factoring because there's not too much to group together if there's only two terms. But if there's four terms, and we'll do a six term one here too. And so in factoring by grouping, you're grouping uh, terms together. And typically if there's four, you group the first two and the last two. Sometimes you might have to rearrange the order in order to be able to do the factoring by grouping. And lots of times you actually can put it in different orders and of course still end up with the same two factors at the end. In the, so we're gonna, I'm going to group the first two together. Notice that for a 4a squared minus 6ay, the common factor is 2, because 2 goes into both of those evenly, and there's an a, because it's an a squared and an a, so we can factor an a out. So we're going to factor a 2a out, and we'll put a bracket, and then we'll divide each of these by 2a. Well, if we divide each of them by 2a, 4a squared divided by 2a will be 2a, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, and a squared divided by a is a. If we divide a 2a out of this, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. The a is divided out, so there's no a in here at all. And of course, y, now there's no y here we're dividing out, so there's still a y with that term. The last two terms divide evenly by 7. Now, if there's a negative here for the third term or the second last term, then you would factor a negative 7 out of these. So we'll divide both of these by negative 7. And so what it actually looks like, again, when you're factoring is we're actually to figure what's in that bracket is we're dividing each of these by negative 7. And so dividing negative 14a by negative 7 gives you 2a and then we're going to divide the 21y by negative 7 and 21 divided by negative 7 is negative 3 so 21y divided by negative 7 would be negative 3y. Now notice what's in the two set of brackets here are the same, exactly the same binomial. So we can factor a 2a minus 3y, and this is actually this is actually still common factoring. Common factoring does not have to be always just a monomial, one term. It could be a binomial or even bigger. So we're going to factor a 2a minus 3y out of each of these, and what we actually do to get what's the next factor, the other factor, is we divide 2a minus 3y out. That's what you're actually doing when you're common factoring. So we're going to divide this by 2a minus 3y, both of these. 
So this divides out, and this divides out, and then what goes in here is 2a minus 7. That's what's going to be the second factor. Now some people think that there should be a square here because of the fact that we factored it out of two places, or there's two of those 2a minus 3y's. The only way there'd be a square here is, for example, if this was a 2, and this one actually could be higher, maybe it was a power of 5 or something like that. That's the only way you can get it to be squared, because then we would have factored a 2a minus 3y squared out of both parts. Another reason that it's not squared is, if you look back to the first example, we just because we factored out of two terms doesn't mean it's going to be squared. In the first example, we factored a 3x squared out of each of these, but this is not cubed. We just factored it once out of each, so that's why it's just 3x squared, no extra power. Okay, So we factored the uh, 2a minus 3y once out of each of these, that's why it's just 2a minus 3y. Now we're going to do an example with um, six terms here and you could group the first three together and the last three together and that might work. Uh, I'm going to actually group the first two, the middle two, and the last two together. And so for the first two, uh, notice that there's a, an x cubed and an x squared here so we can common factor an x squared out of both of these. So x squared is a common factor. If we divide 5x cubed by x squared we get 5x. If we divide negative 3x squared y by x squared, the x squared divides out and then we'd just be left with negative 3y. The middle two terms both have b's and there's a, a y and a y squared, so we can factor a by out. I couldn't factor a by squared out because there's no square here. There's only a single y here, not two multiplied together like there are here. So we can factor a by out. Dividing this by by, the b and the y divide out and then we'd just left with 5x. Dividing this by by, the b divides out, so no b, so it's just negative 3. And then y squared divided by y is y. The last two terms divide evenly by 6. Uh, just like up here, if there's a negative in front of the 14, we factor a negative 7 out. Same here, where it's a negative 30x, so we'll divide a negative 6 out. So negative 30x divided by negative 6 is positive 5x. And 18y divided by negative 6 would be minus 3y. Notice what's in the set of brackets is the same for all of these, so we can factor a 5x minus 3y out of all these. So when we factor it out, again, this is divides out because we factored the 5x minus 3y out, and the other factor is going to be x squared plus by minus 6. Now remember, you can check any factoring by just expanding this back out. For example, uh, 5x times x squared is 5x cubed. 5x times the negative 6 is the minus 30x. Uh, if you multiply the uh, 5x times the by, you get 5bxy, which is that term. And if you keep on expanding, you get the rest of the terms. Negative 3y times x squared is this term. Negative 3y times by would be that term right there. And negative 3y times negative 6 would be the 18y in the end. So you can check always by expanding. So that's common factoring and factoring by grouping. On the next page, we're, uh, we're looking at factoring trinomials in this page. And we're going to start with the simpler of the two. If uh, the quadratic term, which in this case is the x squared, has a coefficient of 1. So x squared plus bx plus c. So there's some coefficient of x here and some number in the end. And to factor that, we're looking for two numbers that have a sum of whatever b is and a product or multiply to whatever c is. In the example here, we're factoring x squared plus 2x minus 15. So we'll be looking for, now we'll, we're going to try to factor this into two binomials. Each one would have to start with an x because it's x that multiplies by x to give you that x squared. So in order to factor this, we're looking for two numbers that uh, have a sum of 2 from the 2x and a product of negative 15 from the negative 15 on the end. Now there's, um, there's uh, two different pa pairs of numbers that multiply to 15. 3 and 5 are 1 and 15. It multiplies a negative 15, so one has to be negative and the other positive. And you could list them all. The one we're looking for, though, is negative 3 and 5, because negative 3 and 5 multiply to negative 15 and also add to positive 2. The positive has to be in the 5 because it's adding to a positive value, so the bigger number has to be positive. Now what we do with those two numbers is this. We put the negative 3 after the x in 1, 
and the 5 after the x in the other. And so I'm stating that the factors are x minus 3 and x plus 5. Now remember we can always check any factoring by expanding and I'll do that here. If we expand this we should get the original trinomial. So x times x is x squared. x times the 5 would be 5x. Negative 3 times the x would be minus 3x and negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 in the end. So we've got an x squared at the beginning. Uh, 5x and negative 3x add to positive 2x, negative 15 in the end, and that's exactly what we started with up here. So it does check. That is factored correctly. In step 4, we're looking at factoring ax squared plus bx plus c. And uh, in this, the only difference between this one and the top one is that the uh, coefficient of x squared is no longer 1. So we're not we're not worrying about this particular method when a is 1. That would actually be step 3. And in order to factor this, we still need two numbers to have a sum of b. But the product isn't just c. It's actually a times c, whatever a times c is. In the example here, we're factoring this trinomial. So we're looking for two numbers that have a sum of 18 and a product of negative 40 because 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. Now there's, there's more than one way to factor these trinomials. I'm going to show you a method called decomposition. And in that, so in, in that method, I'll explain where the decomposition comes from. Again, we're looking for two numbers that have a sum of 18 product of negative 40. So that would be 20 and negative 2. They multiply negative 40 and, and add to 18. Now what you do with the 20 and negative 2 is you rewrite this trinomial, same first term, but the 18 gets broken down into 20x minus 2x. So there's the 20 and negative 2. That's why it's called decomposition because we're actually breaking down or decomposing the 18x into 20x and negative 2x. Same last term though. And now this is factoring by grouping. The common factor in the first two terms is a 5x, so we can divide a 5x out of these. Dividing this by 5x, we get x. Dividing 20x by 5x, we get 4. We can factor a negative 2 out of the last two terms, so a we'll factor a negative 2 out. Dividing this by negative 2, we get x. Dividing this by negative 2, we get 4. Notice the x plus 4s are the same, so we can common factor an x plus 4 out. And what's left then is the 5x minus 2. So that's uh, the method of decomposition.